Hello everyone, we've got some great community stories lined up for you in this episode. Yes, we most certainly do, but however I digress. You know Kai, I've been feeling really, well, a little bit restless lately and I think I feel like I want to take up a new hobby. A new hobby? Hmm, interesting. What do you have in mind? Paragliding, extreme bungee jumping, white water river rapid surfing. White water river rapid surfing? Mm -hmm. Wow, is that even a thing? Mm, <laughs> I don't know actually. <laughs> but you know, you could be Singapore's first ever white water river rapid surfing champion. Uh, okay, somehow I don't think so. Maybe on a boat with a helmet and a jacket and a professional qualified instructor, yes, but on a surfboard. Mm -mm -mm. No way. Not what? a chance. No. Really? Mm, that's a shame. I think a lot of people would have paid good money to watch that. Ooh, okay. <laughs> if you say so, maybe I'll get more Instagram followers <laughs> if I do it. But no, but on all seriousness, I, I think I'll stick to something a lot more, you know, uh, sane and not as insane. Okay, you know what? Speaking of hobbies, I'm going to tell you what I am planning to do. I'm going to take up crochet. Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry I laughed, but actually, I think that's quite cool. Crochet. But, but why? Well, you can ask Betty Davis, ask Meryl Streep, ask George Lucas, Russell Crowe, um, Ryan Gosling, you know? Well, you see, as an actor, I am a bit of a storyteller and crochet is great for someone who likes to spin a good long yarn. Oh. <laughs> My goodness, that took a very long time to land a very bad joke. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. In all seriousness, if you have the patience, it's a great relaxing and absorbing pastime. You know, and it has such a long history as well. Apparently, it developed from ancient Chinese needlework and made its way to Europe before reaching our shores. Wow, all the way from China to Europe. I'm very, very impressed by that. And it just happens that in our Spirit of Singapore segment today, we're going to meet a group of adorable ladies who crochet amazing pieces for charity. Crochet is a very good form of therapy and a form to relieve myself from stress. There's never a dull moment when we are always together. It doesn't have to be rich to do charity. It's just the, the, the kindness from the heart. Crocheting and knitting have become increasingly popular in recent years, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Knitting and crocheting can also be therapeutic. The British Journal of Occupational Therapy published a study involving 3,500 respondents with depression. 81% reported feeling happy after knitting. I love this crocheting is because I have I meet a group of lovely people where we joke and talk. We, we, we have a lot of things to share. <laughs> I guess it's all about the friendship, having common grounds on it. I actually start a class uh, of teaching how to crochet. Then after that, we slowly, slowly start as an interest group. Then we have five members in our group. <laughs> Crocheting uses a single hook needle for drawing yarn through intertwined loops to create a textile. Whereas for knitting, two straight needles are used to manipulate yarn instead of one. Both require nimble fingers and precision to produce the desired patterns on the garment. This blanket is very big, so it's about 140 cm in length. So it took me about a few months. For this one, it's about 600 gram valuable. I took about a week and a half to complete this baby blanket. This is about 200 yards per skin. So I think I took about 10 to 12 skin for this particular size of blanket that I'm working on. So 12, 10, about 2,000 yards. Valerie's group did not stop at just being an interest group. 
Over time, they turned it into something more meaningful. I feel it's uh, more meaningful to do crochet work and give to someone who really treasure the thing. Slowly, slowly, we just start our uh, charity project from there. We transition to uh, charity is because uh, we want to help more people. I know it's, uh, it's what, how it feels like to have nothing at all because I've been through that. So now I'm trying to contribute back to society to help those people who really in need and let them know that we care about them. I am never a keen person to do a big project, but when it comes to charity and stuff like that, yes, you know, uh, thinking about what we are doing is helping the others, it keeps the ball rolling actually. Valerie's group has benefited many charities and causes. One of the group's recent contribution was for the Australian bushfire in 2020. So I also am an animal lover. La. Australian bushfire is through Knit and Crochet Group by a lady called Nicholas. Yeah, she actually uh, posts on that group saying that anybody can help. We need nesting basket for the Australian bushfire. So uh, that time, I took up this challenge because I never do it before. This crochet nesting basket is used for like, birds. Uh, baby squirrels, just a small, 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 small baby you know, who lost their nest one. as a nest, a warming nest for them. Yeah, so I say, yeah, why not try lah, try, try, try. So we just start doing, don't stop, cannot stop at all. Yeah, I think now the biggest hurdle is COVID-19. First we have to stop all the physical meetups and change it to Zoom, which is something very brand new to all of us back then. Of course, I like Zoom, but I prefer the physical session better. How we actually uh, get through this COVID-19 is through persistence. And then we find two ways to actually get to meet up with each other, uh, not letting the COVID-19 to restrict us. Uh. Okay, this project we are doing is for the Philippines. What happened is that uh, we found out uh, this project from Valerie and then she gathered us around asking whether if we want to help. There's a lady who posts in the Knit and Crochet group. First, she never asked for help. So I saw like, uh, she posts like beanies and scarf. So I messaged her through Messenger. I asked her, hey, do you need some more scarf? Because I have scarves at home. So uh, she said, yeah, 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 I need, they need a lot because they're sending to the orphanage there. It's showing them that you care. You know, telling them that you're not alone. Whatever it is, you, we are still here for you, lah, in a way. They might not know who we are, but I'm glad that we are able to do something for them. Thank you, Jesus, for these wonderful blessings. Thank you, Lord, for your provide. That's why we have abundance to bless. Thank you, Jesus. Bless all this to all the kids, to all those who receive protection, health, and restoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. My friend actually is a volunteer in that group. So he sent me the picture uh, and showed it to me. You can feel that they are very, very grateful for what we have done for them. Yeah, it's just a little gift. It's just beanie, you see, but it's, they like it very much. Like that. You can see their, you know, from their face. I feel happy. Yeah, I say, Hey, at least my something that I have done is not that very perfect one. Actually help the people there, you see. It's not about your race, your your religion, country or whatever it is. You know, you need help, we can help. We help. <laughs> I always believe in this. Uh, we might be poor, but there are other people who are poorer than you outside. We might not have the money to share with you, but we have the ability to do something for you. I hope more people can actually notice those people who are actually in need of uh, help and um, not to cast them aside. I really hope that, you know, after they receive our blanket, they really um, can really feel that how much there is still people caring for them and they are not alone. That's why we do this blanket for them and we do it all this is out of love. Those 
ladies are doing some great work with the causes they support and their stuff is so attractive. So if you want to support them, you can look Valerie up on Instagram or Carousel as Val Story. You know what, Kai? I think you'd look great in that hat. Oh, well, thank you, but was it a hat, really? I thought it was one of the nests. Oh, uh, okay, I'm not 100% sure what it was, sorry, but, but it looked great. Hmm. You know, I find it interesting that you felt the need to apologise for saying that. Um, well, that lady put a lot of hard work into it and, and it looked great. I just, I didn't want to come across as insensitive, you know? Mm -hmm. I totally understand, but do you think Singaporeans feel more scared of offending people these days? It's, it's like we are becoming overly sensitive as a nation. Well, I think we're probably more careful about sharing our views on social issues nowadays, especially if we're gonna slammed on social media. Mm. But I think that's not only true of Singapore, but the whole world mm. now, right? True, true. But there does seem to be a sort of shoot first and ask questions later mentality to netizens and exchanges these days. Yes, and I do feel that maybe this period of oversensitivity will lead to a more open and accepting society. At least that's what I hope. Well, I hope you're right, Sharda. City Joe Evie, who's hosting Street Talk this month, has been out talking to Singaporeans about this issue in particular, the Amanda Man character from Jack New's latest film, Argos Go Army. Hello! So for the next four weeks, I am going to be mainly focusing on Street Talk and I am terrified. <laughs> I'm horrible with speaking to people on the street, so skit skit. <laughs> anyway, for this week's topic, we are focusing on the latest saga about Jack New casting a transgender actress and giving her the character name Amanda Mann. The actress herself has been quoted to say that she was not offended, but netizens were. And that caused the production team to apologise and also to change the character name. So. Were the netizens justified in their reactions or were they being oversensitive? Me and my city Joes are out on the streets to find out. Let's go! Ah! 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 Hi! Sorry, we are doing a... Okay, that's alright. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> In this case, do you think the netizens overreacted or you feel that they are justified in their reactions? I mean, if the actress herself wasn't offended, I don't think like, it's any reason to be mad about I don't think it's called overreacting. I just think that some people uh, take things too sensitively. So at the end of the day, it's just to tell a story and it's not really affecting anyone's life. So I think it's uh, overreacting. Yeah. Uh, for me, it is justified. Also in concern, it's not uh, offended by it. I don't see why others should be offended. I feel that not only by nature, Singaporeans are very sensitive. So do you feel that it is okay for netizens to, in a way, force their views onto the production team? At the end of the day, we are the ones who watch the film, right? So we do have a right to say like whether it's right or I don't think so. Unless they, they invested part of their money in that movie, then uh, it's okay. Like, yeah. I think this in a way will affect the creative side of, you know, the whole story. Netizens should be a bit understanding, but also like, it's not wrong for them to say their opinions. Lah. Just like how filmmakers uh, influence, they influence the, the people, the people also influence the media. So I guess it's the same thing. It's okay for people to express opinions. Yeah, it's not wrong. But then I feel like ultimately it's up to the filmmaker, like how he wants to take the critique. The production team have their own discretion to, to, to decide whether is there a need to really take everything, whatever the netizens have to comment. And do you think that uh, such controversies will actually cause the special groups of people to be harder to find jobs in the media industry? No, I don't think so. It depends on their talent. If they, they have talent, then why not? Oh, like they have to be like quite careful with it, right? Yeah, I feel like it's possible. Maybe they don't want to take that risk in hiring like people like this in the fear of like being attacked. It's always 
hard to please um, the majority because you don't know who you're gonna offend and you don't know whether your content is sensitive to a certain group of people. If you want to talk about being harder to employ, you have to go to the root of the problem. If this is a very big problem, it will spark change you know, in other people and although right now it's in a bad place, maybe more people will be inclined to expand and expand on this situation and try to make it better. I'm in a good mood. Everyone has been really nice to me. I'm thankful. Thank you everybody. Thank you so much for today. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, you were awesome! Thank you so much! Thank you! Thanks! Thank you. Bye. Thank you! Bye. I think with this topic, there is no clear-cut answer. Where is the line between, is it insensitive or is it comedic effect? Is it um, standing up for what you think is right or is it impeding on other people's creativity? But I think one comment that really stood out for me was that um, someone said, it sparks like this that will actually facilitate discussion in future. So, what do you think about this topic? Let us know in the comments below. This is City Joe Abby from Singapore One. Thanks, Abby, for being so brave and getting all those people to share their thoughts. Some interesting opinions there. Yeah, yeah, there really were. And, you know, I agree that it's great that Singaporeans feel comfortable sharing opinions in this way. And then, as Abby says, it can only help to promote discussions around sensitive topics like this in mm -hmm. the future. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that can help us be more accepting of other people's points of view is reading. Oh yes, I'm so glad you said that. I wholeheartedly agree with you, Kai. I think we can learn so much from reading books by authors who offer different outlooks and perspectives from us. Mm -hmm. In addition to our fantastic libraries, there are a number of little bookshops scattered all around Singapore with unique, welcoming environments and wonderful books to read and buy. Yes, and our girl Abby again, she's really, <laughs> really hardworking, has visited one such bookshop Hook on Books, which offers books in Chinese. Let's take a look. When you were a child, were you one of those who can't wait to grow up, can't wait to start working and reach out for your dreams? And now that you're all grown up, do you wish that you didn't have to grow up? Well, you can seek comfort here at Tong Yan Tong Yu, Hook on Books. Hook on Books is a Chinese bookstore located at 114 New Road. With its unique style and ambience, people sometimes mistake it as a Taiwanese store. But it is a local bookstore established by Barry's World to create an immersive environment for both kids and adults. Monica, Every year, they will organize a picture book writing competition for children from 5 to 12 years old. These children will have to write and illustrate the stories themselves and the winning entries will see their books published and sold in the store. Take for example this winning entry, entitled, What is this colour? The young author was inspired by a boy in his art class, who kept on asking, What is this colour? Our young author hopes that with this book, readers will learn to be more empathetic and not make fun of those who are different from us. Uh, 多彩的,更多元的学习华文的方式,然后让孩子可以主动学习华文,然后大人呢,看到华文的这一块也能感受到它的美好。As Monica says, Hook on Books is not just a place for children, but is also designed for adults like you and me. So this is the Adults Reading Corner, and all the books are donated by kind people along the way. So whenever you feel tired and whenever you feel like you need some me time, you can just come to this nice little quiet corner to relax. 
And just like the sign says, 再忙也要歇一歇 No matter how busy you are, find some time for yourself. Yi 因为从我们的华语文儿童绘本创作比赛的这些得奖作品呢，我们看到很多孩子的创意远远超过于大人，也因此呢，我们希望有更多的小作家可以来到童言童语这个创作的一个小空间。I think both children and adults will love this space. With children, they'll come in and find that wow, Chinese is so interesting with all these different types of books and comics, and、uh, they can even get their own books published. And for adults, I think more and more personally, I feel like I'm tired of growing up. So it's very nice to have this space that is designed for adults who wish they didn't have to grow up. I feel like I found comfort here. I feel like I found a friend here. So if you feel like me too, then come on and drop by here at Hook on Books. This is City Joe Abby from Singapore One. Oh, Hook on Books looks so inviting, doesn't it? Like you know, you could just go there and spend a whole day watching the world go by. Mhm.、Mm、it does look warm and cozy, right? Yeah, it really does. Oh, and did you notice the small tree in the middle of the shop? Yeah, the very charming little tree with flashing lights and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe I should get a tree for my living room. Living room, Christmas tree, you mean? Well, yes, that too. Christmas is coming soon. It's true, but I was thinking more. I don't know, like an actual small tree, or maybe plants. But I already have plants. Okay, but you know what? I just really want to get closer to nature. Well, that's good. I agree. Plants can help improve your mood, reduce fatigue, lower stress and anxiety, and even boost healing and pain tolerance. Yes, and do you know that you can talk to them? Of course, I know that. So, what do you say to your plants? Aha! You know, every day, while watering them, I'll ask them how they are. Ni hao ma, apa kapa? I sign and sign them, then they will grow, right? Oh, so sweet! You sayang sayang the plant. Then you talk to the plants in different languages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, if you're serious about buying some plants, our city show Bruce stumbled upon an awesome nursery in, of all places, a Chinatown shop house. What's up, Singapore? Earlier on, on my way to Maxwell Food Centre for lunch, as I was cutting through Temple Street, you know what I saw? I saw three shop units, three shop units filled with plants. Oh my gosh! I tell you, I need to get back there. I want to get back there to find out more. Located right smack in the middle of Temple Street is Homegrown, a large plant store. However, as I approach the store, I realized it was more than just a very large plant shop. The plants were cherry picked and very beautifully presented, and the vibes I got were more of a trendy cafe than the plant shops I'm used to. Vincent Chu is the retail manager and has agreed to share more about the shop. Hey guys, I'm Vincent Chu. I'm the retail manager of Homegrown by Bunny Chen. Okay, many people ask us、uh, why why do we set up a shop in the middle of Chinatown? Our slogan, our company's aim is to make gardening accessible to as much place as possible. But this is the first one that we have at、um, somewhere near Central. So we want to let the customer or residents here、um, to have a place to shop 
any time of the day. Being said that, this shop is 24 hours. You know, customers always start to call us mini garden by the bay. <laughs> Which are very, okay, we are very proud of. Uh, at least they enjoy what we are doing for them right now. Let me introduce you to our new arrival. All this batch of uh, plants are actually came from Holland. Yeah, so um, of course, this is the elbow, Monsera elbow variegated, and also we have the Adamsonia variegated. Yeah, this is uh, one of the much sought after plants that's currently, yeah, so we actually listen to our customers' feedback and bring in all this. Philodendron melancrosum, also from Holland. Begonia pink polka dot. On top of the wide variety of plants, I also noticed that they carried many exotic plants that are not normally available in other nurseries. Let me try to pronounce this. Huh? Okay, Begonia February Mosa Exotica. Begonia, I know, the something, something, something exotica. Exotic. But exotic. really, it is damn exotic looking, guys. Damn exotic looking. You know, I, I would love to get one, but you know what? Way over my price price range. <laughs> How much is it? Uh? Uh, this we retail at one five eight. If I was super over my price range. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, lah. I'm telling you, I love all the plants, but honestly, I cannot tan the names. Lah. I mean, what's up? All the names cannot pronounce and all that. Wow, it's a chalat. Simple name, lah. Philly something. Philo that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so wow, <laughs> After touring the place, I have to admit that this store caters to a more upscale market of plant lovers compared to our traditional plant shops. And they are doing a great job revamping the image of plant shops in Singapore to attract new customers. I like this place that I uh, can see all the plants and beautiful flowers. After today's visit, I am super excited. I want to do my part in making our nation an even greener city by introducing more plants into our urban jungle. Now, what about you? This is Bruce for Singapore One. Thank you, my man, Bruce. See, see how lush the shop is? It you know, I'm sure they talk to their plants. Yes, and I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm totally 100% sure that they do that. But you know what? I think I have now made up my mind. I'm inspired. I want to be a plant collector. Mm, well done. Maybe I'll crochet a pot holder for your plants. How about that? Oh, that's really kind of you. And that would make, actually, that would make a great Christmas present. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, we have to exchange presents during Christmas, I will talk to your plants, Kai, in every single language known to man. Done deal. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about talking, please, you can come talk to us about anything, especially topics that you would like to cover on SG Now. Our City Joes are always out and about in the community looking for Singapore stories to tell. Thanks for joining us today. Keep reading, keep discussing important issues, keep talking to your plants, and join us again on SG Now. Bye! Bye!